Welcome back, travelers, to Legendary Lore. Now, as you may recall, it was absolute chaos last time we were in the story of Kamigawa, and this is the beginning of the third book in the original trilogy. So we're rounding it out. We're getting really close to the finale here. And, <laughs> well, it just starts off with Michiko sending a message, a kanji message, to Toshi. And Toshi replies, I'm busy right now. <laughs> I got my hands full. And so... While that's happening, no one knows what happened to Konda after his entire ghost army appeared. And the Sorotami have moved on from just the Jukai to also attacking Takanuma, which is the name of the swamp area where Toshi is from. Meanwhile, Toshi is still at the, the academy, Manamo. And he sees aspects of the all-consuming Oni of Chaos eating the library itself. <laughs> <laughs> and he remembers well not re remembers he realizes that leaving that which was taken there was a terrible idea because either the oni will get it mochi will get it or konda or okagachi will get it there's all these different factions that all want it and he needs to get it because if he doesn't then they will but he can't take it because the maojin of night's reach already forbade him from doing that and he also already said that he was going to do what she said he finds a small group of people trapped in the room with a thing that was taken. Right? Mm -hmm. It appears that that which was taken is able to repel the Oni for some reason. He's not entirely sure why, but it can. And in that area, he finds Nagao and a few of the, sword, the, the men and Kitsune that had been left behind when he took Michiko back to the Kitsune village. And he's thinking, I really need to save these guys at some point. <laughs> Toshi meets up with Hijetsugu. Oh, yay. Yeah. And he sees him and he goes, look. He takes him to Sorotami City. Look at what I've done. Fire everywhere. Lesser Oni destroying the city. There's just bits and pieces of Sorotami littering the cloud roads and he says he, just, uh, he tells Toshi you need to commit fully you to the heroes and clan the heroes and reckoners because I see you you're over here you're over there you're working with this group you're working with that group I don't need you doing all those things I need you working with me Hijetsu blood brothers and Toshi's like, this is a really, really bad idea. <laughs> and one thing that he that is that I haven't really mentioned, Hijetsuku really likes to hug Toshi. <laughs> like it's weird. He'll just grab him and then he'll squeeze him really tight. And he's not doing it out of affection, obviously. He's doing it out of like intimidation. Like, if I felt like it, I could crush your entire tiny little body. <laughs> tiny man. <laughs> Puny human. So Toshi gets away. And as he's about to teleport away, he looks at Hijetsugu and he realizes something. They aren't friends anymore. They're not allies. In that moment where Toshi decided, you know what, I can't, I can't stay here. I have other things I need to do. I have my other dedications. You know that I've sworn myself to the Majin Knight's Reach. You know what it's like to basically have to do what your God says. I can't be here right now. And it's at that moment that Hijetsugu, in his heart, he knows that he's lost a friend. <laughs> so Toshi goes to Numai, which is in the swampy area, and he finds Kiku. He's trying to like get, like, get her help, right? So he goes to where she lives, which is basically an entire place filled with witches and stuff like that. Dark magic. Oh, fun. And when he gets there, he finds out that the entire place was killed. Every single person in there was violently and viciously slaughtered by Sorotami. But there's also a ton of Sorotami there. Their corpses litter the floor as well. And it's at this point that he realizes that Kiku is still alive. And she's covered in shadow. And she's been driven insane. And Toshi is able to use his night powers to kind of get them under control. To where it's like only instead of her being just kind of like covered in like 
wispy shadows. It's all just like it looks like a full body tattoo kind of kind of deal. Mm -hmm. And then we have one of the most plot significant moments of the entire book that we did not know was a significant plot moment until a few weeks ago. The two of them make love. If people making love is plot significant, usually a descendant is involved. That is entirely correct, Joe. And what's weird is that we're not talking about any of the Umazawas from Dominaria. Obviously. We're talking about the Umazawa in Neon Dynasty. And how he could possibly be related to Kiku. It's also possible that he's just using the Umazawa name as a way of getting clout. But that's not entirely clear. What is clear is they definitely did it at this point. Then they find Maronar. Fortunately, not at the same time. And so they go there. He's <laughs> like, hey, what you guys doing? He's like, oh, oh, oh. Humans are disgusting. <laughs> so they find Maronar, who is the leader of an entire clan of rat people because he's so epic and technically a rat hero. And they're like, look, we got to get the band back together. And Maronar, he does the whole shtick where he says, no, I can't go. My people need me. Please let me come with you. You need to get me out of here. <laughs> Marinar's the best. Yeah. So he, he, <laughs> he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't go. They need me here to protect them. This is my home. This is my family. And then he goes, guys, got to say something. Otherwise, that's good. Like, I have to be able to come. And <laughs> Toshi's like, oh, but Marinar, we need you. You're the strongest rat folk around. No Nozumi could match your prowess and usefulness. And Marinar was like, oh, <laughs> fine. I'll go, but know that it breaks my heart to leave my family behind. Like you, little Johnny. I'm Timmy. That's what I said. <laughs> so Marinar basically runs out of the camp before... Toshi and Kiku can even leave. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go to get a giant moth, obviously. Oh, I need to see one of these moths because I don't believe you. <laughs> Between episodes, I'm going to pull up one and send it to you. Um, you say, if these don't exist, you are 100% making it up. <laughs> not. I'm really not. It's surprising how much I'm not. And so Toshi, Kiku, Mero, and the moth arrive at Minamo. And Toshi slowly teleports Naga O oh, and the other survivors back to the Jukai, right? Mm. While this is happening, you still have the all consuming Oni of Chaos. And Toshi's actually able to fight back and, and stop it using his night powers, right? But because he's fighting the Oni of Chaos, he's directly opposing Hijetsugu. And so Hijetsugu is going to bring the smack down. At the same time this is happening, Konda's ghost army has just arrived at Manamo. And so Hijetsugu sends all of his Onis down to fight them. And so only two Yamabushi remain at this point to go with Hijetsugu. The others get sent with the rest of his Onis. The two Hijetsugu he brings with him go to take down Toshi. And he tells Toshi, I know you're no longer Hayozen. And the reason he tells him that is because then I didn't mention is that at the beginning of the book, he actually used kanji magic by shoving his hand essentially into a flame while also making himself invis like incorporeal. So not a non-existent, right? Only the seal got burned. Yes. He was able to use his kanji magic to ma basically only make that tangible, burned it off, and then he put on a fake one. And so Hijetsugu knew that he had removed the curse. But Toshi also knew that he couldn't remove the curse from Maronar or Kiku because if he did, they would kill him immediately because they wouldn't know that he had uh, done that, right? Mm -hmm. So all this is happening. And Hijetsugu, like I said, has just revealed that. Because he then says that he snuck away to kill the Hyozin into the oath from the beginning. 
Because the specific thing I said for the Hyosin Reckoners is that you cannot spill the blood of another Reckoner. So what Hijitsugu does is he reaches out, he grabs Kiku by the throat, and starts choking her. And then he grabs Toshi and does the same. And then Marinar, who had been waiting on the roof this entire time with the moth, getting really, really bored, comes down and sees that Hijetsugu is currently choking out his two friends and realizes, oh, that must mean that since he's not getting hit by the, the oath thing, that Toshi must have fixed it all up already and I can kill him now. And so Marinar Marinar, runs up, stabs both of Hijetsugu's eyes several times. Oh, Kagachi shows up in the distance. That's where we're ending the episode. No, Marinar!